in the name of Jesus we come to your temple lifting our hearts in prayer in praise in thanksgiving in adoration in gratitude to you for you have been and you continue to be a good God to us we ask you Lord uh, allow our coming together in your temple today not to be out of this satisfying tradition but we pray that today you will tabernacle with us bless those who watch by television bless those who hear and cause your spirit oh god to turn our hearts in obedience to your word we can't even do right without your help and so today we ask you jesus won't you cover us in your blood hide me behind the cross of redemption speak through these lips of clay step from between these pages of your holy words walk between the pulpit and the pew walk between the rows today hold the devil in check glorify your own name by fulfilling your intended purpose for the preaching of the everlasting gospel We'll be careful that to your name shall be all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Somebody has come by here with a need that only God can satisfy. Somebody has come by here, God, with questions that only you can answer. But all of us have come by here seeking a vision of hope in our Savior, Jesus Christ fulfill this today we pray in jesus name sing the chorus changing me changing you we have come with open hearts oh let the ancient word can the church say amen Today I speak to you on the everlasting gospel. Would you turn your Bibles with me to the 14th chapter of the last book of your Bible? What chapter did I say? I said the 14th chapter and the book is Revelation. Revelation chapter 14. Revelation 14. And it would do the old man's heart so much good to hear you read the word with me. Would you turn your Bibles to the 14th chapter of the last book of your Bible? Revelation chapter 14. And I'd like to ask you to invite your attention to focus on verse 6. We shall read together 6, 7, and eight have you found it let's read together and i saw another angel fly in the having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell in the earth to every nation kindred tongue and people saying with a loud voice fear god and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters and there followed another angel babylon is fallen is fallen that great city because it made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication i'd like to use as a subject words found in our text verse 6 said and i saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel i'd like to focus on these three words the everlasting gospel the everlasting gospel this is the only time in your bible that the gospel is added to this phrase the everlasting gospel i'd like to suggest for your understanding that the gospel goes beyond matthew mark luke and john 
I'd like you to understand that the gospel can be found from Genesis to Revelation. I'd like to help you sustain the idea that the law is a part of the gospel. That obedience to God is a part of the gospel. I'd love to have you understand today that there are many cheap, watered-down versions of what they call gospel as men peddle the word of God to satisfy their own pockets. Are you listening to me? I'd love you to understand that the gospel is not just in the New Testament. I'd love you to understand, my friend, that the gospel embodies both the Old and the New Testament. Are you listening to me? I know about the prevailing concept that the Old Testament has been abolished. Are you listening to me? But you see, I, I can't believe that because one of my favorite parts of the gospel tells me that he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. That the chastisement of my peace was upon him. I didn't find that in Matthew. I didn't find that in Mark. I found that in Isaiah chapter 53. Are you listening to me? I know the devil doesn't like the truth but i'm going to preach the truth today are you listening to me and so my friend the everlasting gospel is declaring to us that god has only one plan to save mankind if adam and eve when they walk through the pearly gates as will also the last sinner to have repented whoever it is that makes it into god's kingdom will be saved only because jesus died on calvary's cross for our sins that's the gospel in essence are you listening to me Adam and Eve had the gospel preached to them God Almighty became the first preacher when sin entered God himself came down and in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15 commonly called the protevangelum the first good news the first proclamation of the gospel it was God himself who delivered the good news it was God himself who preached the first gospel he looked at the devil he looked at Adam and God declared these words I will put enmity between thy seed devil and her seed the her in the text there is used euphemistically in reference to God's church that would come through you see Adam and Eve were the first pair. God did not create any other human being. So all those who comprise the church are descendants of Adam and Eve. Are you listening to me? So when God said to Adam and Eve, when God in addressing the devil, God said, I will put enmity between thy followers, devil, and her followers. Are you listening to me? You see, you got to understand the word enmity there, described in Oxford English Dictionary. The word enmity means act hostility God was saying devil hear me today you may have won this battle but you will not win the war you may have knocked down Adam and Eve but but you see devil every one of my children whoever may contact with me even though you sometimes lead them into sin deep down inside their bosom is active hostility against wrongdoing I will put enmity between thy seed and her seed. And if you ever wonder why is it that some folk who are hugging up the devil doesn't like you, it is not so much because of you, it's because of the Christ in you. The devil in, I, I'm going to preach today, I, I said the devil in them don't like the Christ in you. Are you listening to me? Sometimes you don't trouble anybody, they don't know you, you don't know them, but they just don't like you. They just don't like you because they just don't like you. And I hear the preacher said, you can't even give them any reason to like you. The devil in them despise the Christ in you. It's the presence of the enmity. Are you listening to me? I will put enmity between thy seed and her seed. It was God preaching. But he never stopped there. He said, devil, there will come a seed of the woman who will crush your head. Are you listening to me? Then God says, predicting the death of his own son, he said, thou shalt bruise his heel, but he going to crush your head. When Christ came to do battle for us, when Christ came to undo the works of sin, when Christ came to show us how to live in 
obedience to God's commandments. When Christ came to show us what a real Christian should look like. How a real Christian should live like. Are you listening to me? When he came down here, they lied against him. They despised him. They treated him shamefully. Are you listening to me? They bruised him. The devil on the cross of Calvary thought that Christ was crushed. But even in giving his life, he wounded the devil once and for all time. Are you listening to me? Albert Schweitzer, Albert Schweitzer wrote a book entitled The Quest for the Historical Jesus. The Quest for the Historical Jesus. Albert Schweitzer. Thought he would do a fine research. He thought he would dig up some stuff. He thought he would go into, into the facts of history. He didn't want to just use the Bible. He decided to go in the facts of history. To dig up historical records. To find out whether or not Christ was just a figment of the disciples imagination. Or whether he's a fact of history. Albert Schweitzer did a fantastic job. A fine research. An intellectual piece. He came up with some conclusions he said yes Christ is not a figment of man's imagination he's a fact of history Schweitzer looked at the fact that Pilate Pilate was real also was a prisoner whom Pilate tried whose name is Jesus but Schweitzer said I have one problem when I look at his teachings I see him as an awesome teacher he said he was divine but when I looked at Calvary Schweitzer said he was crushed on the wheels of history Schweitzer said that Christ was mangled on the wheels of history Schweitzer said that Jesus died of failure but I say in answer to Schweitzer he could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free and sometimes the best evidence that you've got power is when you have power and refuse to use it are you listening to me I say in answer to Schweitzer when I look on Calvary and see Christ dying for me he is my hero i am a mighty conqueror all because of calvary and so the gospel is not just domiciled in matthew mark luke and john the gospel is not just resident in matthew mark luke and john god preached the gospel to adam and eve when he said, the day is coming when the seed of the woman would be wounded, but he would crush the head of the devil. Genesis 3 verse 15, I told you, is referred to as the protoevangelium, meaning the first good news, the first preaching of the gospel. Now here in Revelation chapter 14, the seer of Patmos, I didn't plan to preach this here, but something just jumped in my mind. You know sometimes the devil still of hostility against God's church and against God's children. They place John in a pot of boil. No, no, I cook sometimes. Are you listening to me? And every now and then, the hot water spills up and burns my skin. Every now and then, especially if I pour the oil in the frying pan and some water was in there, the thing pops. Sound like I'm cooking. Are you listening to me? Anybody hungry? Well, well, every now and then, a little hot oil burns me. And I tell you, it's not nice. But they place John in a pot of boiling oil. Can I talk to you? When you live in obedience to the claims of God, death can't kill you unless God signs the death certificate. Are you listening to me? The devil can't take you out unless God gives permission. The reason the devil is having such a heyday in the church is that too many of us inside the church don't really know who our God is. We come to church but we don't know him. We buy Bibles but we don't read them. We sing songs but we don't believe them. Are you listening to me? The everlasting gospel is calling the people of this final generation to come back to the plain verse. Said the Lord God, honor your life in step with the plain verse. Said the Lord God. And he calls it, he calls it the everlasting.
everlasting gospel because he will never generate another gospel. Are you listening to me? He'll never send any other gospel. So Paul said to the Galatians who were seeking salvation by works, my Jewish brothers who were seeking salvation by works, seeking salvation through a system of law, Paul said, if anybody bring you any other gospel other than that which we have preached, even if he is an angel, let that angel be accursed. Are you listening to me? There is no other gospel. You find it from Genesis to Revelation. Now I know somebody said, well preacher, I don't believe in the Old Testament. The Old Testament is only filled with wrath. I don't believe in the Old Testament. The Old Testament is abolished. Can I share something with you? You can't even understand the New Testament if you don't have the Old Testament. You can't understand some stuff in the New Testament when you pick up the book of Hebrews, when you pick up the issue of the sanctuary. You've got to go back to Exodus and Leviticus. Are you listening to me? But let me put that aside. Somebody said, don't, don't give me the Old Testament. I just want the New Testament. Somebody said that the Old Testament is filled with, with wrath and, and judgment and, and the fiery God. And, and I don't want that kind of God. But let me tell you, some of the most beautiful and loving and endearing expressions of the grace of God and the love of God is from the Old Testament. I just read to you Genesis 3 and verse 15. But you say, preacher, tell me more. I'm a backslider. Tell me more, preacher. I have insulted God. Tell me more, preacher. I've messed up my life. Tell me more, preacher. I've done some stuff I shouldn't do. Tell me more, preacher. Sometimes I go to bed and guilt won't let me rest. Tell me more, preacher. Well, let me give you one of my favorite texts from the book of Jeremiah. It comes up in the 31st chapter I shared last night with you but just in case you missed it let me read this for you it's Jeremiah 31 31 and verse 3 are you listening to me the Lord hath appeared of old unto me saying yea I have loved you with an everlasting love therefore with loving kindness have I drawn you this is the Old Testament this is the gospel of God's love are you listening to me this is connected with John 3 and verse 16 he said I love you with an everlasting love I love you in the morning when the sun is bright I love you in the sunset of your life when you're old and decrepit I love you when you're up and going I love you when you're down and out are you listening to me it's in the Old Testament the first place that the word grace appears is not in Matthew not in Mark Luke not John the first place that the Old Testament uh, embodies our lifts of grace to us my friend is in the book of Genesis are you listening to me Genesis 6 and verse 8 tells me in the midst of rottenness it begins with but the word but introduces this similar thinking the word but paints a sharp contrast so God is describing a sinful generation a generation flexing its fist in the face of God a generation adept in sacrilege a generation in wanton disregard for the claims of God a generation in wanton disregard for God's commandments but in the midst of that mess the Bible said but now uh, found grace in the eyes of the Lord would you say amen grace in the Old Testament yes grace in Genesis yes so when somebody tells you that the Old Testament is only filled with wrath tell them they are lying 
As a matter of fact, the Bible tells me all scripture given by God's inspiration is profitable for doctrine, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished perfect unto all good works. You can't serve God unless you understand the scripture. Hear me carefully. The devil is no fool. The devil said, all right, all right. Since I can't stop you from going to church, go to church. But don't obey the Bible. Go to church, but don't pay God any attention. Go to church, but only do a part of what God says. Go to church, but, but only pick out of the Bible what suits you. Go to church, but only follow what makes you feel comfortable. There's no salvation in church membership. There's no salvation in just going to church. Doesn't matter what church you go to. There's no salvation in that church membership. Salvation comes from Jesus Christ. And if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you will obey what he says. And if you follow what he said, we'll be in the same church. Are you listening to me? Somebody said, well, don't give me the Old Testament. It's abolished. Lie? The very same preacher who will tell you that the Old Testament is abolished is the same preacher who loves to quote Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He, are you listening to me? Can I be blunt today? It's not the entire Old Testament that they have a problem with. What they have problems with, my friend, is with God's commandments. God's Ten Commandments. Are you listening to me? And I'd love to jump. <laughs> Can I share something with you? Let me share first of all John. St. John chapter 14. What book did I say? St. John chapter 14 verse 15 says, If you love me. Now the clause is conditional. It begins with the word if. So God says, it, it's not so much going to church. It's not so much what you say. It's what you, if you love me, keep my commandments. Well, you can't be a friend of Jesus and not keep the commandments of Jesus. And those are not my words. We just read John 14, 15. Now let me take you to John 15, 14. John 15 and verse 14 says, You are my friends if you do whatsoever I have commanded you. Are you listening to me? So when the seer on Patmos' lonely eye, who was placed in a pot of boiling oil. But God miraculously preserved him. And when they saw that death couldn't kill him, they banished him 50 miles south, out in the Aegean Sea, to this little rock colony called Patmos, where the prisoners, the enemies of Rome, were banished. For copies of this or any other sermon played on this program, feel free to call us and make your requests.